In previous chapter, we discussed pay to public key hash script where one individual was transferring a fund. So there was only one digital signature and one public key. But consider a scenario where a fund does not belong to an individual and to spend that fund you need consent of more than one individuals. You can think of an organization having some corpus fund which is used for basic expenditures. Let us say there are three members who are authorized to spend that fund and to spend that fund you need the consent or signature of at least two out of these three members. So in this case there will be three public keys and at least two of those must provide signature to unlock the fund. This is termed as two of three scheme of multi-signature. So multi-signature scripts set a condition where n public keys are recorded in the script and at least m of those must provide signature to unlock the funds. So the locking script of m of n multi-signature will look like this. Since in our example we are talking about three members out of which signature of two is mandatory. So in this case locking script will look like this. If you remember in previous chapter we explained that the unlocking script will have a public key and a digital signature. But that was for a locking script for single public key. And as you can guess in this scenario unlocking script will have more than one pairs of digital signatures and public keys. So for m of n locking script corresponding unlocking script will look like this. Actually because of a bug in check multisig execution unlocking script will have an extra zero at the start so it will look like this. I will talk about that bug when I will explain the execution of check multisig. In our example two out of three our unlocking script will look like this. And as we learned in previous chapter the combined validation script will be this. The unlocking script followed by locking script. And the result of this validation script will be true only if unlocking script satisfies the conditions set by locking script. And similar to what we saw in previous chapter, this script is also evaluated using a stack data structure. Remember that the sequence of public key digital signature pair in unlocking script should be same as the sequence of public key in locking script. For example, for this locking script, you can have this unlocking script or this unlocking script or even this unlocking script but you cannot have this unlocking script. Let us see how stack execution works using this validation script. So as our counter moves all this is pushed to stack. Then check multisig pops the topmost item which in this case is the number 3. Since the number is 3 so it will pop next three items which are actually three public keys of the locking script. Then it pops next item which in this case is the number two which is the number of signatures required. At this point check multisig should pop final two items which are the signatures but because of a bug in check multisig operation it pops one extra item m plus one or in this case 2 plus 1. This extra item is disregarded when checking the signatures. So it has no direct effect on check multisig. However, because of this reason we added an extra 0 at the stack otherwise we would get a stack error. After this check multisig enters in a loop. It takes the first signature and public key, calls the same function that check sig uses to check the signature. If validation succeeds, it increments the signature counter and public key counter. If it fails for this public key, then it increases only public key counter and tries to validate this digital signature with next public key using check sig function. If signature fails for all the public keys, then check multisig will return false response indicating that the validation script failed. In our example, let us say we have all valid signatures public key digital signature pair 1 is for public key 1 and public key digital signature pair 3 is for public key 3. So in this case this validation will succeed. Signature counter will increment to 2 and public key counter will also increment to 2. Now here since the signature is for the public key 3 so obviously this validation will fail. And remember that when validation fails only public key counter is increased. So now our pointer will point to public key 3. This time validation will succeed because signature 3 is for public key 3. So it will push a value true in the stack. 
this is how multi sig operation validates multiple signature so this multi signature feature of bitcoin blockchain is very useful in the scenario where you want more than one people to approve a transaction this is a common situation in corporates and big companies where you need to take approval of the board before you can actually spend the fund but this useful feature comes with a cost and the cost is the complexity of multi signature however this complexity can be resolved using pay to script hash method or p2sh want to know more about p2sh and how it resolves the complexity of multi signature stay tuned for the next chapter and enjoy my code course if you now want to move to the next chapter you can click on this card and yes don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon because so many interesting videos are on the way for easy navigation to all chapters visit mycodecoffee.com thank you so much for watching